Welcome back. This is one of my favourite films, adapted from a Pulitzer Prize winning play, beautifully shot in black and white, featuring one of the screen's most charming and enduring stars. It is Harvey from 1950. The original Broadway production of Harvey by Mary Chase opened in November of 1944 at the 48th Street Theatre and ran for 1,775 performances, winning the Pulitzer Prize for drama in 1945. The total character Harvey is described by Elwood P. Dowd, the story's central character, as a puka, which are creatures from Irish and Celtic mythology. The creatures were said to be shape changers and could take the appearance of black horses, goats and hares. Uh, they may take on a human form, which includes animal features such as ears or a tail. In most cases, pukas are both friendly and very helpful. In the original stage production, Harvey was never seen, uh, his appearance left to our imagination, except for one occasion at a performance in Boston, where the results were disastrous. While playwright Mary Chase wanted Harvey to appear in the film to make Elwood seem less crazy, uh, the film is far better for the fact that he doesn't. Josephine Hull, who was cast as Elwood's sister Vita, first performed the role on Broadway as did Jesse White, who was cast as hospital orderly Martin Wilson. And before starring in the film, Jane Stewart had a short stint as Elwood peed out on stage. Playwright, screenwriter and film director Preston Sturgis expressed interest in purchasing the screen rights, but they were sold to Universal International for $750,000. Henry Costa was attached as director. Costa had literally grown up at the movies in his uncle's movie theatre in Germany, where his mother accompanied the films on the piano. He began working as a scenarist, then later as an assistant director, before directing two films by the age of 26. When Hitler came to power, he fled to France and then Budapest, where he met Universal Pictures producer Joe Pasternak, who gave him four films to direct. In 1936, Universal brought him to Hollywood, where he cemented his reputation, making highly successful Diana Durban films. Three Smart Girls in 1936, and 100 Men and a Girl in 1937. He went on to do uh, numerous musicals and family comedies before moving to MGM and later 20th, 20th Century Fox, where he made the Academy Award nominated The Bishop's Wife in 1947. In 1950, he directed his most successful film, Harvey, which despite Academy Award expectations wasn't nominated for Best Picture, but it should have been. Amongst those considered for the role of Elwood P. Dowd were Bing Crosby, Cary Grant, Rudy Valley, Joey Brown, who'd also played the part on stage, Gary Cooper, Jack Benny, Jack Haley, and James Cagney. Harold Lloyd expressed an interest in appearing in the film, but ultimately it was Jimmy Stewart who was offered the role. Henry Costa and James Stewart discovered that they worked really, really well together. Uh, Costa said that working with Stewart was without any doubt the most pleasant experiences of my life. There was very little friction, only ambition, craftsmanship and precision. Costa listened to Stewart, adopting his suggestions uh, to change many of the shots, making them wider so that Harvey would be in the frame, and this works to really great effect. Though James Stewart's uh, character would be considered an alcoholic, only once during the entire picture is he seen drinking. This is because of restrictions imposed by the Hollywood production code. In many interviews, Jimmy Stewart said that this was uh, one of his favourite roles. There have been numerous remakes for TV in the US in 1958, again in 1972, starring Jimmy Stewart and Jesse White from the original cast, and finally in 1996, a version that was not well received due to its pacing and elimination of some key scenes. For West German TV, there were German language remakes in 1970 and 1985 with a German cast. Uh, there have been plans to remake the film bouncing around since 1996. They have included attempts uh, by Harvey Weinstein through Miramax Films to cast Jim Carrey, Adam Sandler and Tom Hanks as Elwood. In 2003, John Travolta was being considered for the lead role. And then in 2009, Steven Spielberg was attached as director, again considering Tom Hanks as well as Robert Downey Jr. for Elwood. But this went nowhere. In December 2018, it was reported that Netflix had begun developing a version of Harvey. But I personally hope that it falls over too. A remake seems pointless when the originals are just so good. The story has inspired many popular cultural references, including episode one of the 1975 television series The Invisible Man, uh, Scrubs and The Simpsons. Uh, Harvey was referenced in Who Framed Roger Rabbit, Field of Dreams, Memoirs of an Invisible Man, The Shawshank Redemption, Sexy Beast and A Beautiful Mind. The film did well at the box office, but not quite well enough to recoup its production costs, which had been driven up by the cost of the play. Prior to the film's release, it was reported that Francis the Talking Mule would make a cameo appearance, rebuking Elwood for interrupting while Francis was talking to the big rabbit. Thankfully, this doesn't appear in the film. Reviews from critics were mostly positive. Bosley Crowther of the New York Times wrote that the acting of James Stewart, Josephine Hull and all the rest make the film a brand new experience for even those who have seen the play. 
Variety wrote the film lacks the whimsical comedy charm of the play, but that Stewart was perfectly cast as Dowd. The Washington Post called it one of the most beguiling comedies possible and suggests that both James Stewart and Josephine Hull had put in Academy Award performances. The New Yorker called it a movie that only a case-hardened wowser could fail to find beguiling. It's ranked number seven on the American Film Institute's list of 10 greatest fantasy films. It's included amongst the American Film Institute's top 100 funniest American movies. Um, and, you know, there are a number of things that I love about this film, all of which are good reasons to watch it. Watching a black and white film that is beautifully shot is a special experience, and this is a special film for that reason. Jimmy Stewart's performance is brilliant. He should have won the Academy Award, but the Academy usually gets it wrong, and they got it wrong on this occasion as well. And there are two key scenes, both in the second half of the film, that really tug at the heartstrings. There's the scene in the alley and the final scene at the asylum. Watch this film, but keep an eye out for those two scenes. You'll probably go back and watch them again and again. I certainly have. So what I'd suggest you do is that you go to our website, uh, find our virtual screenings page, find the link to this particular film, click on it and watch it, um, see what you think. We'd always love you to come back, let others know what you thought about this particular film. Enjoy it. Uh, I certainly have many, many times. Uh, I'm sure you will as well. And then come back and see us again for our next Classic Films Review in the not-too-distant future. See you next time.